I've, I've been in this fight, I've been pretty close to it because uh, most of my friends are at the forefront of this. Uh, D David Hogg, I've known since freshman year. Emma Gonzalez, I've known of her since freshman year, but I became good friends with her a few months ago. And Cameron Kasky, we, we worked together, we, we laughed together, we had fun uh, writing a satir uh, satirical newspaper together. and. Uh, just to poke fun in society, seeing where the problems are and realizing where things need to change. And now we're doing that on an international stage. The, the first interview I ever did was with the country of Israel. Somebody called me because a friend of a friend knew who I was and they did a Skype interview. I was in my underwear. I had to quickly put on a, put on a nice outfit and I was not wearing any pants. So I apologize to anyone who was watching Israel State TV that day. But uh, Fe February 14th, uh, not only was Valentine's Day, not only was a day that I was planning to hopefully spend with my girlfriend, and it was also a day of family for it was my sister's birthday. She will never have a normal birthday again. She's a freshman at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Thank thankfully, she wasn't in the building but she was in the classroom next to mine, hiding behind a, new, behind a teacher's desk for two hours as I waited in a closet right on the other side of that wall. I just wanted to give her a hug, but I couldn't. It wasn't until two hours later that a SWAT official came in and led her into that classroom with me with a gun loaded and ready to go. That is not the way that a school day should end. The first text message I actually made out after the event started was to my boss. For Valentine's Day is a very busy day at a restaurant I work at, and we all needed to be there ready, and it was 2.40. I said, hey, uh, probably won't make it in on time today. Don't know what's going on, but uh, sorry about that. And he texted me back saying, are you kidding me right now? And sent me a screenshot of live CNN footage of my school with SWAT cars surrounding it. And that is not the way a, a school day should end. And I, I don't want to get into politics too much because I've, I've done that in so many other places so much, but through, through this, I, I just feel the need that we have to speak out, that this has to end, that this is just ridiculous at this point, that pe people even begin to believe those who feel that we're trying to take away everyone's guns, that people should not, even have a Second Amendment right, that those people feel that death isn't even a crime. Like most of them feel like this, this is murder. This is mass murder. And even in the events with handguns, even that, it is still murder. These are still crimes. They're still breaking the law. Sure, the law may, may be broken, but at the same time, the best way to fix that is to strengthen it. And I've, I've spoken to Congress, I've spoken down in Tallahassee, and a lot of them seem to get it, a lot of them don't. And this, this is not a partisan issue. This is not something that only Democrats are fighting for. This is a human issue. And uh, I'm just gonna pull out a quote that I found uh, a few weeks ago, my brother and I, who he's an alumni of the school, we spoke at a synagogue in Livingston, New Jersey. And I took a picture of a quote under the Ten Commandments. There was, you shall not kill. And there's a quote from a, a Jewish philosopher in which one may murder with the hand or with the tongue, by tail-bearing or by character assassination. One may also murder by carelessness, by indifference, by failure to save a human life when it is in your power to do so. That's Ib Ibn Ezra. That quote is from around the year 1100. Why is a 900-year-old quote so relevant today? Why does it have to be relevant in this day and age? Why does this have to be happening? Why does this continue to happen? Even yesterday, we stopped to cry over what the events that happened in California with the veterans' home. It's tragic, it's sick, this happens everywhere. Parkland was this small town that no one knew of. It was the town that if you pass it on the highway, you'd forget about it the minute after. It's just ridiculous that this has to happen in modern day society. And we stand up here hoping in, in hopes that the people that we lost, that the people that are continued to lost, that their lives mean something. Because this is a human issue and people matter. 
And the moment that you value human life less than the value of a dollar, less than the lining in your pockets, is the moment that you've lost sight of yourself and you've lost sight of what humanity really means. Thank, thank you so much. Just seeing you all here, I mean, I'm just a boy from South Florida. I have I've family up here, but I've never felt such community ties. I've never felt just the one thing that I wanted out of all of this is to meet face to face with anybody I can. Face to face, share the stories, have other people share their stories. So by, by the end of the day, we're not trying to demand for anything. We're not trying to force anything down anybody's throats. We're here for what the people want. And we've realized that our representatives have not listened to what the people want. They are not listening to our voices. We scream at them. We're trying to, we're, we're going to vote them out. We, myself, I'm 18, she's 18. We can vote in this next election. We, we will vote and they can, they can call us children. They can say that our opinion doesn't matter, but in the end of the day, they're in the hot seat and they are gonna be out of those chairs the moment that we get to say what we have to say. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Just going to clarify with the march, it is the 24th, not the 14th. The 14th is a school walkout for anybody who is still attending high school and possibly college. Uh, everyone's going to walk out. I believe it's a 17 minute moment of silence, one minute for each person lost. And a lot of pushback has been given, but I've heard recently that uh, Mayor de Blasio has approved any walkouts. So we're very thankful for the community of New York. And this, this march is happening anywhere. You don't have to scrimp and save to go to Washington. You don't have to be there. There is a march in every major city in the US. There, New York is getting bigger and bigger by the day. There's one in Los Angeles. There's even surprisingly a big one in Phoenix, Arizona. No idea why, but there is. And there's, there's one that recently set up in Israel. There's in six continents across the globe. We're working on Antarctica, but it, it, we'll get there. <laughs> It's happening in every one of these 50 states. And whether you're here near and far, just know that we will be marching and we will show them that we are not just noise. We are a people and we're standing for one thing that's common sense and that's for life to continue, for humanity to live as it always is meant to be. That politics is not why we have lived for all these years, why we have not evolved to this state. Politics is just noise. The real, the real power is in the people. Thank you.